Hey everybody, it's Allison Harrell with the Fort Bend Museum, and today we are talking all about our favorite pest to hate, the boll weevil. Now first up, what is a boll weevil? So a boll weevil is a member of the beetle family. Their scientific name is Anthonomus grandis. As an adult, the boll weevil can get up to six millimeters in length. They are typically reddish brown, black, or gray. Now, some members of the weevil family are quite colorful with spots and stripes. And while the boll weevil isn't quite that pretty, they're definitely no ugly duckling. The most distinguishing feature that the boll weevil has is its long snout. Historically speaking, the boll weevil is the most damaging pest in agriculture. They were given this distinction in the 1920s, so they've really been our favorite pest to hate for quite some time. Now let's talk about what makes them so awful. Why do we hate the boll weevil? So the plain and simple fact is that the boll weevil eats cotton. So the boll weevil likes to eat the cotton shoots and the cotton plants. What makes them very efficient and terrifying for farmers is where they lay their eggs. So they drill a hole using that long snout and they lay their eggs inside of the cotton bowl. So by doing this, they are giving their eggs the best opportunity to survive because the cotton bowl is protecting the eggs themselves. Now the hard shell of the cotton bowl is protecting the eggs from any pesticides. If you have a boll weevil in your field and you spray the entire field with pesticides, it's not gonna do anything because the boll weevil eggs are already inside those bowls and they're already protected and growing. After the eggs hatch and the next generation of boll weevils start, the first thing they do is decimate the bowl that they're in. So they are destroying the crop that cotton is grown for, that bowl and that fiber. Now it might sound like the boll weevil shouldn't be that much of a problem because it takes some time for the eggs to hatch. But the trick is that in one growing season for cotton, the five to six months that cotton takes to grow from a seed to a finished plant with all the fiber showing, uh, the boll weevil can have 13 generations. So just one boll weevil is a huge problem from the start. Now you might be wondering, if the boll weevil is such a massive problem in fields, could I get a boll weevil infestation in my house? Because we have a lot of cotton clothes. The answer is no. Boll weevils are not a household pest, and if they do manage to end up in your household, they're probably going to starve. Their food source that they are used to is the plant itself, not the finished product, like clothing. So they're not going to find their way into your closet and eat holes in all of your favorite t-shirts. Never fear. But they might make it harder for you to get those t-shirts in the first place. Now let's talk about where did the boll weevil come from and what exact damage has it done to the United States? The boll weevil is not actually from the United States of America. It's native to Mexico, which makes perfect sense when you realize that the cotton plant itself was domesticated in Mexico. So it makes sense that there's a pest for a plant that's native to an area. Now cotton spread a lot faster than the boll weevil did. The boll weevil didn't make it to the United States of America until around 1892, when it crossed the Mexican border and into Texas. The boll weevil can fly and travel between 40 and 160 miles every year. So once it's in an area, it's going to spread very quickly. In 1903, the U.S. Department of Agriculture chief in the Bureau of Plant Industry called the boll weevil a wave of evil. Pretty immediately, the farmers in the United States knew that there was a problem and that they needed to figure out how to deal with it. By 1909, the boll weevil had spread all the way to Alabama. The boll weevil contributed heavily to the economic woes of farmers during the 1930s and the Great Depression. A lot of farmers at this time would use the money from the sale of a crop one year to buy the seeds for the next. So if they didn't have a crop to sell because it was decimated by boll weevils, that meant they didn't have the money to buy the seeds for the next year. They ruined crops and bankrupted families all across America. There are a number of songs that are written about the boll weevil. Most of them are written in a way so it's an interaction between the boll weevil and the farmer. And an interesting note is that in most of these songs, the boll weevil is referred to as he, even though it's the female boll weevil with those eggs that are the real issue to most farmers. In these songs about the boll weevil, the boll weevil adapts to every situation the farmer throws its way. So every poison, every spray, the boll weevil just moves on and is fine, which is pretty accurate to how the boll weevil and the farmer really interacted through most of the 1920s and 30s. 
So you might be expecting that hatred of the boll weevil is universal across the entire United States, and you would actually be wrong. The town of Enterprise, Alabama actually erected a monument to the boll weevil in 1919, and the story behind it is really fascinating. In 1916, just like every other farmer, everyone in Enterprise planted cotton, their crops were decimated, and so they decided that rather than keep trying to plant cotton, they would diversify. And the diversification did so well, they made so much money on it, that in 1919, they erected a statue to the bull weevil. They also hold an annual bull weevil fall festival every October, so they really do celebrate the bull weevil. Now, the statue itself is kind of fascinating because the bull weevil part of it wasn't added until 1949. So originally, the statue was holding a fountain. And then once the fountain was removed, her arms were blank for a while until they decided in 1949, let's add a giant bull weevil on top. Now, um, in case you're wondering if maybe the statue has been misinterpreted to, through time, you would be wrong because the statue has always had a plaque in front of it that reads, in profound appreciation of the bull weevil and what it has done as the herald of prosperity, this monument was erected by the citizens of Enterprise, Coffee County, Alabama. If you're wondering what crop the farmers in Enterprise, Alabama diversified to after that 1916 disaster of a year, the answer is peanuts. They started planting peanuts and they were making so much money with the peanuts that by 1919, their county was the largest producer of peanuts in the country. And soon after that, they became the first to make peanut oil in that area. They also had a deal with at least one circus that they sold their peanuts to. So they were literally growing circus peanuts, which is kind of fantastic. So the question remains, with an insect that has caused over $15 billion in damage and crop loss, what are we doing to get rid of them? A number of solutions have been offered to farmers throughout time. The first one that was used was arsenic sprays. So arsenic was sprayed on the plant and it didn't affect the plant, but it would kill the boll weevil for a little while. Very quickly, the boll weevil developed a resistance to arsenic, so it was no longer an effective pesticide. Now, um, at one point, one third of all pesticides used in America were used to try and eradicate the boll weevil. Um, there were also some other solutions that were offered. My favorite is that Theodore Roosevelt suggested that they import a predatory ant from Guatemala to eat the boll weevil, which is actually a solution that has been implemented since then, but sounds kind of ridiculous. It wasn't until 1978 that the United States government really got involved with directly trying to combat the boll weevil. It was in this year that the Boll Weevil Eradication Program, or BWEP, was started. Now, this program is a cooperative group that has formed between the cotton farmers and the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service of the United States Department of Agriculture. Now, these two groups working together have really done amazing things for the cotton industry. The first thing that they did was actually to genetically modify the cotton plant. So today, the plant that we grow is genetically modified so that it is pesticide resistant and toxic to boll weevils. This means it is an easier plant to grow. You don't need to use as many pesticides on it, but if you do need to, it will not harm the plant and it is naturally resistant to the boll weevil. So since 1978, the line across America of where the boll weevil lives has been slowly moving south. With the eradication of the boll weevil, areas that plant cotton are seeing a 10% increase in crop yield. And to make it better, because they don't have to spend the money on pesticides, they're saving money at the same time. So they're getting more crops and they're spending less money on pesticides. It's a win-win. Now you might be wondering, where does this leave Texas? Texas is one of the few states in the United States of America that still has a bit of a boll weevil problem, which is also why the government keeps a really tight control over who is planting cotton, where, and when. It's because we don't want to get more boll weevils. So again, boll weevils can fly anywhere between 40 and 160 miles in a year. So they can really go quite a ways. So we have to be very careful when, where, and how we plant cotton so that we don't encourage them to return. 
Fort Bend County is unfortunately one of the areas of Texas that still has boll weevils. That doesn't mean it's a huge problem. They are working on that issue, but eventually, maybe one day, we will be past that imaginary line of boll weevil eradication. I hope you enjoyed this video about the pest that we all love to hate and its cute little snout. And I hope you learned something. So see you next time.